What's up YouTube? It's Carolina Calvin. Come back to another video. In this video, I want to give my top five MVP candidates of 2016-2017 NBA season. Now, the five players I have here uh, really haven't changed them out. You know, these guys have pretty much for the most part for me been on this list. You know, obviously you know, some of the guys have been swapped around. But with only five or six games left, I don't feel as though it's going to change um, in that brief time. So here's my list. Uh, I was wrestling with five and six. Um, you know, of course, the guy I got outside the five. At number five, I got Isaiah Thomas. And very close to him, I have John Wall. You know, uh, I was wrestling with those two, but I decided to go Isaiah Thomas. I felt as though overall consistently he's been um, – He's been consistently good throughout, you know, throughout the season. John Wall's really picked it up, and John Wall was playing the way he's been playing, um, at least to get the Wizards up to this point, at least in the second half of the season. He would have easily been, probably been much higher than five, just to, you know, because of the things he's done, um, the the floor game, uh, getting other teammates involved. That's improved. Um, he's, I believe he's number two in assists, something like that. Two or three. Uh, the defense, which apparently, you know, it's like finding a goddamn unicorn. You barely see guys play defense. And he's one of the guys that plays defense. He goes 110%, both ends of the floor. The only issue, the uh, big issue with him throughout the season was his inconsistency and mainly his jump shot. You know, he, he missed a lot of shots. His shooting percentage really suffered. But he's really picked it up um, all around. And like I said, still really tough. But I still give I give Isaiah Thomas the edge just because, you know, he's been consistent throughout the season. It's mainly with his scoring. His assist numbers at about four assists, two rebounds. You know, he's not going put to put up a bunch of rebound numbers. He's only 5'9". But uh, he's putting up 29 points, which is uh, top 10 on, I believe it's like six. It was like fifth or sixth at five nine. You know the guy's been amazing, and he's been one of the most clutch players in the NBA. And is you know unlike a lot of players, you know they normally can't keep up something like that. He's been able to do it throughout the season. We'll have to see if it, you know, how it's gonna help them in the playoffs. But he's been really consistent and at that height. He's shooting a solid percentage. So I got him at five. Like I said. You couldn't go wrong with putting John Wall over Isaiah, but I got Isaiah with a slight edge. At number four, I have a lot of people are gonna get mad about this one. I have LeBron James. Now, one of like LeBron James, you know, LeBron James uh up to this point is putting up twenty three, eight and eight. Uh, I believe this is highest rebound numbers in his career for a regular season. Um, I would have to double check that, but I believe it is. And here's the thing about LeBron in comparison to any of the other guys without mentioning, you know, the other guys on this list. He he coasts in the regular season. He's been doing that for the last few years. He coasts in the regular season. And for him to still be able to put up these numbers is incredible. But I think the uh, play of the Cleveland Cavaliers, he is the leader. The play of the Cleveland Cavaliers in March was abysmal. He still put up some solid numbers. Um, you know, he had a couple triple doubles in there, but I felt as though he, you know, wasn't much effort given in there. wasn't much effort. You know, I talked about this in the you know some of the previous game, um, previous videos, where well, mainly in the video um, talking about John Wall's quote. He's he takes plays. He takes plays off. Even takes games off. And I think um, that's really hurt. that's what really hurt. Uh, I guess his M MVP candidacy because you know if, if you're looking at earlier season, he was higher on this list. A lot of people had him higher, and a lot of people still gonna get mad that I had him number four. Um, a lot of people put him at two or three, but I feel as though you know sitting out some of those games and the poor play of the C Cleveland Cavaliers in March has really knocked him down in terms of MVP candidates. I don't think he's really going to be able to recover to even get close to 
uh, winning the MVP award. But like I said, for a guy who coasts to still put up those numbers it has been great. Doesn't play much defense, but you can say it about most of the guys on this list. Um, but at LeBron James at number four. And number three, another one that's going to annoy a lot of people is Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard has really hurt his chances to me, um, at least in the last week or so, just with this poor shooting. Um, you saw it against Golden State where they gave up a 20-point lead. He didn't shoot too well in that game. His defense has kind of wavered. He's still, to me, on this list, the best defender. But his defense has kind of wavered. And I think he's one of those guys who, and you know, he doesn't really care about his numbers. You know, you look at, um, you know, once I go through all these other guys, these other guys on this list care about their numbers. Kawhi is one of those guys he really doesn't. He, you know, he goes out there, he plays hard. And one thing that's really never looked at when in terms of MVP that, you know, can and does factor into, you know, being an MVP is defense. And throughout the regular season, you know, people look at, okay, uh, you know, they look at his point production. His point production has definitely gone up. But then they'll look at rebounds. They'll look at assists. One, with rebounding, you see a lot of these guys on this list getting cheap rebounds, you know, uh, not playing defense, not contesting jump shots, and they're getting a lot of rebounds. Why? He defends on the perimeter. He's playing a lot of defense. He's contesting shots. He's not going to be able to run down there and get a bunch of rebounds. So most of the time, he's going back um, in transition. Assists. Uh, you know that, that number could be higher, but I, he he his usage rating is a little bit lower, especially in the guys at number one and two. His usage rating is low. He doesn't have, and most of the time he has the ball in his hand is to create. So looking at those numbers, obviously you know a lot of people are gonna talk about his rebounds and talk about his assists, but just look at the effort he puts on the floor in terms of his defense and like I said his percentages have gone down and he's one of those guys you look at the box score you'd be like okay how's this guy MVP candidate but you look at the game how much he impacts the game on both ends of the floor and specifically on defense which you know was the calling card as a two-time defensive player of the year that factors into it so I got Kawhi Leonard at number three which may annoy a lot of people but I got him there. And number two, I have James Harden. Now, James Harden, I believe, leads the league in assists. I believe he leads the league in assists. Um, you know, he's putting up the point production. And, you know, e- even the rebounding. The rebounding has been up there. At seven. In the last two weeks, he's averaging 7.6 rebounds a game. You know, the guy... Is nearly putting up a triple double. Another guy who's putting up a triple double. What has hurt him um, these last couple weeks is shooting percentage, shooting percentage, and you know turnovers. And uh, I'm talking about bad shooting percentage. I'm talking about uh, one game he was five of twenty. Uh, another game he was thirty, you know, about around about thirty percent shooting. And the risk does factor into you know these. Bad shooting percentages. And I think that's what's hurt and kind of knocked him down. You know, Because it was with him with uh, number one, number two. And like I said, mine's just flipped around throughout the season. If you ask me three weeks ago what my you know my choice is for MVP top five, it'd probably be completely different. I'll just be honest. It'd probably be completely different. But uh, that's a good thing. You know, it's been a close race. And, you know, James Harden has definitely been up there. And one thing I wanted to point out, a lot of people always talk about this guy's team. You know, they talk about, oh, Eric Gordon's probably six, six man of the year. What was Eric Gordon? What was Eric Gordon doing last year? You know, he's been a spot up shooter for the most part this season. Who's been creating for him? You know, Lou Williams. By the time they brought in Lou Williams, that team was already on a really good pace. You know, guys like Nene, they didn't think. You know, they thought Nene was washed. I mean, he's looked okay. Clint Capella. Anyone thinks he's a good player? Uh, Ryan Anderson, another guy. He's a spot-up shooter who creates shots for him. That's what I'm saying. A lot of people say, oh, you know, his guys are making the shots. But who's creating these shots for him? James Harden's been doing it. Biggest knocks on him, as I mentioned, is uh, 
can we even talk? Do we even need to talk about the defense? We know he doesn't play defense. But biggest knocks, at least from an offensive standpoint, is the turnovers, which I believe he's broken his record of turnovers all time in the season. Turnovers and shooting percentage. And I feel as though he can shoot a much higher percentage, but because he ref baits, which we know I can't fucking stand, has a lot of plays where he'll ref bait, won't get the call, miss the shot, that hurts his shooting percentage. I feel as though this guy can shoot a much higher percentage if he just goes to the basket strong. But I have James Harden at number two. At number one, you probably can already guess it, Russell Westbrook. Now, I made a video a month or two ago talking about Russell Westbrook as he stat padding. And I feel as though, still with the rebounding numbers, he is. Now, the assists, he does have a bunch of turnovers, but so does James Harden. I think these guys are trying to, you know, they got the ball in their hands so much. The turnovers, I mean, you, know, you look at Russell Westbrook's usage percentage, I believe it's about 43%. That's an all-time high. So you kind of expect to see some turnovers. You still don't want a guy to have five, six. You know, Westbrook's had uh, nine, ten turnover games. You still don't want guys to have that. But I think from an offensive standpoint, these guys have gone 110%. Defense is another story. But uh, back to Westbrook's rebounding. Um, it's come from a lack of defense. And I don't think... Um, I still think he will be really high if he averaged five, six rebounds because of what he has to carry on the offensive end. So people, I think that's people very overrate the rebounding numbers. You know, I've seen people talk about stats of uh, the shooting percentages in transition once he grabs the rebound. You know, baseless. What's what's the difference between a guy like Taj Gibson or Steven Adams getting the rebound, immediately giving him the ball in stride, in transition, and it essentially is the same thing. So, you know, he's still putting up the rebound numbers. You know, obviously that's fact. He's averaging a triple double, but this is just what I see when he gets those rebounds. A lot of them are uncontested. A lot of them he fights teammates. A lot of it. Teammates were closest to the ball and just allow him to run up and get it, you know. Now, if he's out there contesting shots and then going and hustling to the boards, different, totally different story. But uh, what this guy has been able to do offensively, at least, you know, uh, two of his notable games recently against uh, against the Magic, he, it was a 57-point triple-double, shot a good percentage. You know, was the team was down in the stretch, literally carried them to that W. That really helps his uh, MVP chances against the Mavericks. Yeah, you say the Mavericks, the Magic, they were down in these games, and this guy was able to carry that team. Definitely in the Mavericks game, that's my phone. I'm sorry. Definitely in the Mavericks game, he really carried them down the stretch. He was making all kinds of plays. You got, you got to get a guy credit. You got to get a guy credit. A lot of people didn't think he would be able to keep keep up with some kind this kind of pace even despite him playing defense he's still giving a bunch of effort offensively you see him in transitions guy going 110 percent doesn't sit out games always like the guy's effort always like the guy's effort it's just people you know it's just just listening to some of the people talk about the nba it is very annoying and sometimes you 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 just to dispel a lot of these, what a lot of these people say, you sometimes you know kind of go overboard. The guys play really good basketball. It's just I think um, the rebounding, you know, the the rebounding, padding, the turnovers, the shooting percentages, and that's been a knock. And it's the same thing with James Harden. But what these guys have been able to do, they've contributed to a lot of wins. And even you know with these triple doubles. They've led to a lot of wins. So you got to give him credit. I got him at number one. Definitely has helped these chances, his chances in the last couple weeks. I won't say, you know, last few weeks. Westbrook at number one. Let me know down in the comment section who you, you know, who are your MVPs? Uh, if you want to do a top five, who you think is going to get it? Uh, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. Thanks for watching.